Well, I, I was born and raised in Kansas, a place called Ellis, Kansas, and uh, it was a railroad town. Uh, my mother was a, a Disney. Ellis, Kansas was full of Disneys, and uh, my father was a, uh, was a slaughterback, of course. I married young, my childhood sweetheart, and we were trapped in Ellis, Kansas. I had a chance to go to KU and go to work as a printer. I'd been a printer since I was 13 years old and learned to run a linotype machine, which was setting type for newspapers. So they hired me at KU and I went down there and decided while I was there I'd go to school. Uh, it was a big place, bustling place, and I was going to be a scientist. And I'd worked all night because that was my night job, setting type on a line type machine. And I was tired and I sat down, went, went to register for school, sat down in front of a table, had a little placard on it that says ART, A-R-T. And I had had no art of any kind, uh, not even in third grade. We had teachers te teach it, they didn't teach it. And I sat and talked to this little fuzzy-headed man about what art was, and it changed my life. I registered in the art department. I, I started to KU where the art department was different from what art is, the way it was arranged politically today. In those days, there was a whole building full of design and stuff like that, but the art department was painting, drawing, and sculpture, and that was it. And we were all off by ourselves. We had our own dean, as so to speak, and he was a German expressionist painter who has listed in the books, whose name I can't remember now. And he developed that art department into a singular unit of pure art. And they started me out drawing, and then progressed me to painting, and progressed me to some sculpture, and pretty soon I was one of the top students in the class. It took me seven years to get my degrees, BFA and the MFA, both of which were seen as terminal degrees there. And I decided I didn't want to run a line type machine there at KU anymore. So I went off to teach. And first I went to Texas to teach, and then came back to the University of Iowa to teach, and eventually uh, I was asked by a friend to come out here and interview for the job at Western. And I came out, we interviewed, took a look at this place, and decided we would move here and never leave. Um, I, ta I taught all the art history, and painting and life drawing classes and eventually became chairman of the art department and uh, uh, kind of helped build the art department as best I could against some kind of walls that were put up for art and eventually I retired in 1993 and haven't been back up there since. <laughs> At the University of Kansas had an instructor there who taught me, or at least led me to believe, that art was supposed to express something. It wasn't just something to paint pictures and to paint flowers and stuff like that. And I began to make it political while I was there, and getting in trouble of all kinds with a couple of the instructors there by showing them the way they acted. All the paintings I do, except maybe one or two, deal with what, what's going on in the world, with my view of what it is that's happening and how it influenced people, how it, the effect that it has on people. The only one that I have that isn't that is a picture of a boat that I painted one day sitting, looking down in the bay out my front window. And all, all the big paintings, or all my, the paintings that I present to the public, 
are about what goes on in the world. The most important painting is one I painted some years ago. It's a triptych, three panels. Large paintings. I've got uh, articulated paintings. I've got triptychs, diptychs, all kinds of things. All of them a subject matter of people doing things to themselves, to each other, to the detriment of both. Uh, This is the companion, the one back here. Um, the subject matter here <laughs> is, is it, the, when the painting's finally done, the white canvas back there will be its centerpiece. It's called the first one. And what it traces from here, from here through here, in, in this big center panel, is how human males first came to being. And then the troubles that came to the world after the first human beings came to be as little human beings. Now my wife and my s s children and my friends all snicker at that, but it's a tracing in painting of the way the world has come to be and why it's come to be and the reason that it has become to be. And the picture over here is Mother Earth with her scrotum beast and over here is Father Earth with his, and I haven't got it all figured out yet what it is, his, but you can see the skulls all piled up at his feet and this is going to be a reflection of this over here. So that it's going to be my final statement about this silly world that we live in and die in. <laughs>